Hello everyone, what is up and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the Lisk family murders for our final episode of Spooktober. Now on the 31st of October of 2010, which was a Sunday, 16 year old Devin Griffin returned home and started to go on about his normal activities of playing video games, you know, the jazz. But he soon realized that things were too quiet for his normal daily life. Indeed, it was, you know, not as noisy. Normally there's that ton of noise you just are used to, but there was none of that. It was quiet. He then went upstairs to his mother Susan and his stepfather Bill's room to see if they were awake. He called out to them, but heard nothing. He then went in and he called their name. Nothing again. Now, at first he thought it was a prank, but then he lifted their red blanket to reveal that, in fact, his mother Susan and his stepfather Bill were dead in their beds. After being consumed with terror and hysterics, he ran out of the house and called his Aunt Lori, which is the one that called the police. The police arrived and would find his brother Derek as well, but I'll get into what happened to his brother Derek a little bit further in this. They start piecing together what happened before Devin found the bodies. Bill and BJ, which is Bill's son from a previous marriage, went hunting on like a deer hunting trip and they stayed in a cabin. Well, they returned the night before. They all went to a neighbor's house for like a little get together and that one went on until about midnight. Devin went to spend the evening at his father's house and then went to a concert at church that morning on Halloween morning. Now, apparently Aunt Lori, she was very concerned and confused because Derek didn't show up to work and this wasn't like him. He was supposed to do work for her husband. She then rang the house. There was no answer. And then he, she reached out to Devin. But as I previously mentioned, he was at his biological father's house and he wasn't home. So they also began to determine the depravity of these crimes. William was shot five times in the head and face. Susan was sexually assaulted before being shot three times in the head via close range. And then Derek, he was curled up on his bed. His back was facing his door and his head was next to the wall. The police had determined after breaking down the door because it was locked from the inside that he died via blunt force trauma to the head, but it was a quick death and that he didn't feel anything, which is great to know. The police also then think, wait, where's BJ Lisk? And as I mentioned, this is Will's son from a pre previous marriage, and he's the only one missing from the house. It was also known that BJ wasn't too happy with the marriage of his father and his stepmother, none whatsoever. And the police already had a sneaking suspicion right away as to who committed such a depraved crime against the family. They found no evidence of a struggle or forced entry, and this is when they determined that whoever did it knew the layout of the house and they knew the family. Like, there's no sign of anything or anything super suspicious. So, they also started looking into BJ's background. His criminal record was quite intriguing, and it was also apparent that he had threatened self-harm on himself whenever he had a fallout with his, with his father. There was an incident that happened with him and Susan in 2004 where he punched her dead center in the chest. Another one just two months after this where he hit Susan with a coffee mug before he grabbed her keys and he ran away. Also another incident which showed much more aggression towards Susan is when he attacked her in the shower. This is where it escalated very high before actually committing these murders. And unfortunately, it was also known that after every incident, BJ was taken away either by his father or the cops, and he would either be released or sent to a mental facility to recuperate. After he went to the facility, his father then applied for a guardianship over his son to help him, but clearly it did not. Now, BJ would go on to be arrested at the same cabin that him and his father were at when they went hunting. And when he was in court, he pled guilty. And this meant that instead of the death penalty, he would be in prison for life without parole. That was the conditions of him pleading guilty. Now, the Lisk family would endure another tragedy in 2011 while BJ is in prison. BJ committed suicide. Maybe it was his guilt over killing his family that became too much for him and he decided to end his life. What are your thoughts on this? Ultimately, I feel very bad for Devin because here he is a 16 year old boy that lost everybody in his family. But what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments down below. I would love to know and I will see you guys for November's video in a few days. Bye guys.